first things you see when you step off the London train at Folkestone Station is an artwork by Bob and Roberta Smith. Folkestone is an art school. Altogether, there are 40 artworks dotted around Folkestone in very unexpected places. So I've come to Folkestone today to have a look at some of these artworks to find out why it is an art school. I'm going to meet Alistair Upton, Chief Executive of Creative Folkestone, who's going to take me on a tour and explain a little bit about how this project came into being. So tell me about how this has all started. Well, it's, it's not so long ago um, that the town was really down on its luck. It lost its tourism and the port had closed, but uh, Creative Folkestone was set up to see what we could do uh, through creative activity to um, transform Folkestone back into a, a great place in the first instance for people to live mm. and to you know, grow up, bring families, study and so on. And then if you get that right, people will visit. And, you know, 17 years later, we've, we've really made some great progress. The, the artworks is, a, is a, a collection I don't think you can see anywhere else. There's nothing like it. It's, it's sort of the largest collection of contemporary art outside in a town. But if you come and see it, it's a way of understanding a town. So each of the pieces is made for Folkestone. And so they sort of reveal through it the history of the town, the geography of the town, what's happening in the town, and also they glimpse what might be coming. So you've got the artist's imagination to work with the grain of, 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 of history and the grain of the land to make something, and people can come and read that. But of course, they're artists, so there's a universality. So you can sort of sense, oh, Folkestone, this is very particular, but there's something we can pick up. So there's nowhere else you can come and see a collection and understand stand a town through its collection. No, it's a really lovely concept, that. So this is a fabulous position for this Richard Woods. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it's the sort of, the ridiculousness of it, I think, that excited him, and that it doesn't fit, so it's too oh, yes. big for the plan. It's and sort of askew. Yeah, it, it, it's askew and it's funny, and I think that's what he wanted, it's sort of comic and comical, and that thing, you go to the seaside, we all do this, we go on holiday and we think, oh, I, I could live there, and I, you know, where would I have my house? And, and then he's like taken that and made these comic houses and placed them in spaces. And then he's gone on to actually they're called holiday homes and then you get into the more serious issue of housing in the southeast of England and holiday homes and should we be going anywhere we like and building houses and so on. <laughs> you know that in some places actually somebody could do an Airbnb right there, couldn't they? They would build something. Well, there's and, a build. <laughs> and that pink one over there. Yeah, it's in the middle of the harbour and, um, and, and and it's ludicrous and it looks like a like it's just it's just there like a boat. Um, and people come in and they canoe or they stand up paddleboard and they go out there and you see them sitting on there occasionally, you know, almost as if they've gone to visit the person who lives in the house and they sit on the side of it. Oh, they, that's they, lovely. They don't take tea, but it looks no. almost as if they've called out for a cup of tea. <laughs> and I, the seagulls, I expect. <laughs> ah, the seagulls do love them. They yes, do I love bet. them. So this is just a lovely, joyful piece, isn't it? it, it, it it's bringing sort of South American enjoyment and life and pleasure. And it was built um, by the artists working with members of the community. So a lot of the decoration inside um, comes from that work. And oh, it's now used by the community in that. So all these beautiful bits have been done by yeah. folks and residents? Of in, yeah, How in lovely. workshops that, that, that she she worked on. She was, she was uh, Solcara was sort of trying to get that feel of outside uh, and living outside that you get in, in, in South America and bringing it to Folkestone and, and it worked and we really thought it was just going to be there for a minute and everybody was going to enjoy it and notice the difference, not realising that actually it works in Folkestone as well and people are using it. Well that's wonderful and so pleased to have their own things as part of it, Around that's it. what's really yes. yeah. Yeah. And this one's a very gentle one, isn't it, really? Well, it's a sort of shelter, I suppose. Yes. So you can come in here and, and enjoy being by the beach, being on the coast. And 
Lubaina was very interested in jelly molds. She did uh, a piece in Liverpool which was multiple jelly molds as pavilions and she imagined where they might be in, in, in Liverpool and I think got the public to think about that. But behind us was where the pleasure park used to be in Folkestone and so it was a place of um, entertainment but also high sugar content. So it's capturing a sort of piece of the history of Folkestone. Like so many of the artworks here mm. are revealing the town. They've got a universality, so you're sitting here, this could be a beach anywhere. And then there's a history that's been lost because the pleasure parts have gone. But it's capturing that, the sense of sugar, the enjoyment, the thing. And then you sit here and you can think, if you wish to, about trade yes. and beaches and um, who made the sugar mm. and, and people taken from Africa to, to, to the West Indies. And so this is probably the most photographed artwork. It's by Cornelia Parker and called The Folkestone Mermaid. And so it was really inspired both by H.G. Wells' story, The Sea Lady, and H.G. Wells lived in Folkestone. And of course, it's also reminiscent of the very famous Copenhagen Little Mermaid, which sits very similarly on a granite block like this. But this one is rather different because it's modelled on a resident of Folkestone. Cornelia Parker, when she made it, invited anybody who lived in Folkestone to apply to be the model. And somebody called Georgina Baker was the winner, and this is her. And what I love about this is that she's so beautifully poised and looking out over this lovely stretch of Folkestone Beach, which is beautiful sand. And that's what's so special about these Folkestone artworks, because they're everywhere, and it really is an important part of Folkestone's summer.